ancestors, I think that I chose my ancestors. Di Fortune is an ancestor. Yes. Elster Crowley is an ancestor. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. These are the people I honor. Mm. And probably others I can't remember at the moment. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, thanks. No, I thank you for mentioning, you know, the spiritual ancestors. Spiritual ancestors, yes, I do spiritual ancestors, but not physical ones, because, you know, I, I cannot pretend, I cannot do a ritual or a working if, the, if I don't feel a connection. If I want that, I go to church. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, get the gray cells going. Get the gray cells going. Yes, love. I have yeah. another question. Um, do you feel that there is a future for Wiccans and us and true working together? Because I think currently there are people maybe trying to do it, but there's resistance on both sides. Well, I don't know. Um, ideally, yes. But the resistance, as you said, comes from the people, not from the gods. Yeah. They don't give a damn whether they're invoked in a circle or in another ritual format. This is people, again. It, you know, the gods are quite happy to be invoked in a Wiccan circle. Hell, I, I, I did it. I was a Gardnerian witch. I just put the altar in the north. The north gods on it. You know, and the other strong but you know. And I just did craft rituals involving the Norse God for years before I actually found any information to extend and to develop as a true in this country. Because there was nothing. Could you say a bit more about your development of Azatru? Because you met, you know, you worked and met with people who did research and did some exploration. Did you, has the form of the ritual and the form of the invocations, has that become more, I say, historically accurate? Or how did it change? Well, the thing is, a lot of people in heathenry uh, focus, f focus very much on historical accuracy, which is excellent. But, at one point, that is where spirituality comes in. You cannot legislate and regulate spirituality. You can invoke uh, in a voodoo style with a drum, you can invoke in a craft circle, you can invoke even, you know, you can set up a, a, a Nordic, I've got uh, that scheme of Yggdrasil, but if you put Kanuka Gap at the top instead of Asgard, you can even impose the ultra, the conventional Kabbalistic tree on it as well. It's just. How it's your own personal creativity. The gods, they're fine. They're fine with all of it. But it is the human who's got to expand and develop the creativity. I mean, at one point, when I got first really involved in the 80s with Odin, I, you know, I didn't, I really, really didn't want to know about anything else. Egyptian, Celt, Greek, all the stuff, but was, no. Because that was it, that's what I had to focus on. And if I wouldn't have done that, I would have watered it down with other stuff. I would have never been able to produce the kind of work I have produced. So that is the roots of my Yggdrasil. But now I start branching out, I start looking at voodoo. I start taking a, a, a renewed look at Kabbalah and not only to the, the surface of the system but the matrix underneath and then you find that you can or it you can practically duplicate the law. I have a, a technical question about the use of formula in dollar. Yeah. Uh, having worked with runes as long as you have, um, I would I would guess that almost every combination of runes you would know some formulaic uh, application of. So when you find that you need to uh, create one more spontaneously, perhaps for a very obscure purpose, um, do you combine different formulas that you've already worked with, or do you impose a new interpretation onto the combination? I'm just hoping you can make a I know, it depends. It, it, it really depends what it's for. I mean, I, uh, the runes, I like when I did the concert, those runes with the verses of Havamal, I did that in 88. I mean, I probably, w I may very well do different ones now because I have learned a lot more since then. 
But that doesn't invalidate my earlier work. Well, I noticed, for example, in, in what you performed that there were uh, was one section where there were uh, strings of rhythms. Yeah, uh, yeah, that is symphonical. Uh, yeah, yeah. I took just the most obvious ones, mm -hmm. the ones where the rune meanings and the rune the runes meanings fitted the description of you know ale runes, alu lagus urus that you know it's spelled ale. Uh, birth rooms, obviously, feel, bacana, bathroom, you know, but the, the obvious ones. You said when you started out you had no one to talk to and no one to share it with, and yet by the time I remember being very aware of it, which was probably about 91, 92, maybe as late as 93, but everybody was doing it. They were the coolest things ever. I mean, yeah, go no, on, you better do it. I started from 1981. It's after 81. How did, how did that, I, I know you were at the core of that process. But I, no, but, but I mean, yeah. the current wanted to come through. Okay, but then I was had, asked to speak. The first time I was asked to speak was for the Oxford Golden Dawn Society. Mm -hmm. in, and then certain people um, had the uh, miss, uh, well, basically, Every talk I ever gave, I've done fellowship of ISIS, uh, Occult University Leeds, I've done them all, and every time it was, are you a Nazi? And it, it, you know, and it went on and on and on, and of course I was not. But then, you know, I just talked about the rooms, I had a whiteboard, and I, I, I just put them down, what they meant, and how you combine them, and, and, and I just did that on the trot, on the trot. And then I did the home workshops as well, and it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then the book came out. And then the book came out in the private publication in 88, and then it was taken up by Llewellyn, and it became, you know, it came out. And, and it just somehow grew. it bled into the chaos community. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. these big, hulking guys. With, with goatee beards and these big black jackets who look like, very frightening to me, you know, at the time. Um, and we still get to know them, you know, pretty sweet, some of them. Um, but every, but runes were the cutting edge. These were bad, bad guys. These were, these were guys who, who were not fluffy. They, that they were, is why, and, and they, that's they, why they chose the runes, you see. Okay. Because it is dark and it is dodgy. <laughs> from that, because in that time, uh, have you any idea what amount of resistance I had to shift before the rooms were finally accepted as a respectable system? And that I, is, I and that, I, I and that is from your tradition and all. Mm -hmm. Yeah? I was a f liar in the Gatnaian scene when I started using rooms. Was I was a Nazi. When, when did you. When, when it leaves the victory all came out in 88, and then you the the relationship with Kveldorf and the, that was 93, 94. That was, that was That's when I later. hit the states, and yeah. that is when it it really took off. Is that it, it was a big it was a I, big release then? Yeah, yeah but tell me about I, how it went. Tell, how did how did that relation the the Asa true um, and the Ring of Troth thing and expansion of the states? How how did that feel for you? I mean, oh. did you travel there and yeah, and I traveled there. there? Yes, and yes. You, yes. Yes. Did you feel the current coming through that it wanted to, was that its right time for that? Yes, yes it was. But then also, Edward Thorson was working at the other end, and he was coming out with fantastic stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, we were basically polarized in some weird way, European, right. American, uh, you know. I just remember at the time in the yeah, early 90s, it just was <coughs> so powerful. Yeah, just but that was so due to me and Edward, and mm -hmm. well over later on. <coughs> you know. Thanks for Thanks for yeah, was, uh, I mean, was the left hand path. <laughs> I was the so called right hand path. You know, <laughs> Edward's path is about power, mine was about service. And, you know, we complemented each other in that, in, in, in that regard. Mm. You know, mm. he did his thing, I did my thing. But yeah, we crossed swords a couple of times. Intellect is just uh, the way it Slightly on the same subject, but this idea of service, right hand path, left hand path. Do you, do you, did you, or do you now, use the runes um, in an in an aeonic for an, a, an aeonic purpose? And do you try to influence world events, um, for instance, uh, or 
influence the like, global consciousness or things like that with the moon? Oh, he misregards to the environment and animal welfare. Yes, and of course, I used whatever donic energies or other energies I could muster to promote Obama, because that is the biggest paradigm shift of the whole century, for obvious reasons. Yeah. I'm happy that you're doing some work for the animals as well, really, because they are ignored for the most part of the human lives. Uh, yeah, that's a remark, that's not a question. That's okay. a compliment. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. No, I am no longer on this path. You know, I now consider that I have, I've given thirty years of solid service to the gods and the folk. Now I'm working on my own state of gnosis, and whatever time I have left is for me. You know, to lead what I like, to practice what I like, to interface with other cultures and currents I enjoy working with, and that's it. Yeah. What's exciting you at the moment? Oh, I find this marvelous synchronicities and this marvelous energy similarities between uh, the Norse system and various forms of, uh, well, the African yeah. systems, all of them, really. Yeah. Uh, it's bloody marvelous. Maya Darren, I mean, the Roman, yeah. who brought it to us. Mm -hmm. Huh? Maya Darren, who brought it first yeah. to our consciousness. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. yeah. Touching on that subject, um, I know quite a few people who have worked with those deities, including myself, and we've all found this attraction pull to voodoo. I've always decided it's something about the bargaining process that you have with the Norse gods that they also have in voodoo. Do you think that's the the pull and the connection? No. For me the connection is that you read those Norse sagas, right? And you read this description that somebody, that there's a big war going on with sorcerers and, and you read how they fight them, but, you know, and you read that somebody does a sending, somebody else does a shape shift and somebody else goes to look in the house at the, for a particular person and that person isn't there but all they see is a goat. Which is all very nice until you want to know how the f do they do that. And that's where you look at voodoo. Because I, I've always said, this is not something recent, I've always said we have lost 99.9% .9 of our magical technology. And because both strands are so similar, you can study, look at voodoo and, uh, and related religions and you find how they did it and you can recover the actual practical, magical way of working. I mean, another, uh, what both coaches do, both Fudu and Asatru, in may, maybe nowadays it isn't done to the same extent, but they're both in animal, they both sacrifice animals, right? It's, it's part of the process, and that is another similarity. And you know, the way we use the rooms, they use the shells, and the numbers fit, and the deities fit, and the whole thing is like, you know, serving with both hands, literally. After that, Kyrgyz. Um, I just want to ask, how, uh, how do you deal with the kind of uh, the ancestor cult in Voodoo and... But uh, well, they're not my ancestors. Because it's very, it's very central. For yes, Voodoo. well, I because have... Because they always claim back Africa as being... Yes, well, that is, for those people, yes. But it's not my ancestry. My ancestry is Dutch. And for the most part, well, basically, mm. the shine. So I replaced that with um, the heroes, both like the Volzoons mm. and my personal occult heroes. But I don't actually do any ancestor worship. I wouldn't know how to. Mm. And I've never actually missed it. Mm. I don't miss it. There is not a vacuum in my magical life that I have to do this. I never have. It's you uh, were just emphasizing the the technical uh, yeah. value of the Voodoo yeah. systems yeah. and the power. Um, considering the, the fact that it obviously does work, at least in its local context, what do you think accounts for the, the general sort of cultural degradation of those societies and also the complete failure of their obviously powerful sorcerers to actually make a dent in the influence of uh, Western monotheistic and technological invasions. I mean, do you think if Northern Europeans still had this magical technology, 
our civilization would be even more potent? Or do you think that there's something about this type of magic that is useful only on the level of personal power? On the level of personal power, because at the end of the day, all kinds of magic goes against the grain. It is antinomian by its very nature. If you use magic to change society, you can't, because you're dealing with a group mind, and a group mind of seven or eight magicians working together can never, can never combat the group mind of, shall we say, the Catholic Church or uh, the government. It is a matter. It's on the mental level, on the mind level. It's a numbers game. Mm -hmm. There's more of them than there is of us. You know, I have no desire to change society, social structure. I mean, why should I? What they have done for me? <laughs> <laughs> I work for myself and those people I care about. And yes, it's all degenerate, but so what? I, I just don't. I just keep myself outside of that strata. You know, once you start working magic for. Uh, social or political ends, you get another, you know, it becomes again a materialistic pursuit. How that be it not in the gross materialistic, you use magic for that kind of cause, okay? You know, I would have, all right, in the 80s, I used to, when I used to do the odd opening of other people's performance, I used to go stature because it was just bloody cool to do that. <laughs> but I never meant there any harm. It was cool. You know, if you open so, uh, a concert by Dave to Bed or Death in June, you opened it with a f big runicurs on stature, you know, you knew you were going to get the punters applause anyway. So. <laughs> Um, you work with Warden and as well as uh, Odin, but the connection between Gede Nimbo and Gede generally, there is a direct correlation between the two. Between Wodan and Gede Wodan and Gede, yeah, but also with Nekla. I haven't worked that one out. I threw it up on a Voodoo Gnostic website. I said, uh, you know, that basically, who do you think Odin would have more in common? Oh, f <laughs> Because now I've given away that it's me. I went to <laughs> <laughs> because I don't. <laughs> now the idea is I want to learn of people. So when I join a list, I use an, uh, a name Elizabeth or something because I don't want people immediately start polarizing. Oh, fire answering, you know. Because but I, I pose that question on the list. You know who is it? Because. I, I study both and I can't make up my mind. Well, it's so rich a field that there is more and more and more, and you keep changing. But you know, you don't have to be set in a mindset. The changes of itself is the process by which your mind develops. There's also music called Raising, the Raising Bands, which actually involved the Nicola and all that You may have heard of them. No, I haven't. It's R A S I N. They're basically traditional but up to date cultural bands. Which yeah. Are called all the way. Nice. Are they? Uh, all right. If you just type in on YouTube, R A S I N. Oh, fantastic. R A S I N. Oh yeah, that's nice. There, you just check them out. There's, just there's, a, there's, a, there's a direct correlation between between that and the rooms. It's, it's, there's the rooms. Yeah. You'll see something different. Oh, I will. Excellent. Thank you very much. How, how apt as well about you invoking the runes, you know, in your tradition doing it on stage in a, in a musical context. Um, yeah, with the day of Tibet and the death in June. And the, mm. ooh, look forward to hearing back from you on that, from both of you. Thank you. Do we have one last question before oh, we can I've then? asked yeah. a couple, so if oh, anyone, else, one more, one if anyone more. else has got one, I'm sure. But if not, um, just touching on a sort of slightly similar topic to, to the previous question, but a bit more Odin centric. If you look at the sagas, if you look at the literature, Odin has many levels. I mean, he's a very typical um, central god in, in that. Yes. Um, but personally, I've always been much more drawn to the kind of the Woden, the, the fury, the, the, the kind of the poetic side. Um, but I was wondering. Through your relationship with him, has different aspects of him been more important at different times? Oh yes, or yes. Is there's not like one aspect that you no, think has come no, no, all the no. way through? No, there's a few. There's a few. 
I mean, I started off, when I made my first contact, it was with Bodan, my native Dutch. But I started getting involved with all the academic side, and they used the term Odin, so I just ended up fitting in with them and using the term Odin and getting, you know, in lectures and stuff, Odin, this, Odin, that, but in was addressing this well down. I think this is a good opportunity for those of you who have questions but haven't thought of them or have them but didn't want to ask them in this forum, hold on to them. There's only a short staircase between here and the informal chats upstairs. So hold on to them. Yeah. Whilst we say, Freya, thank you so much for coming to Treadwells and I appreciate your generosity of spirit and being so open. It's really a delight. Please join me. Right, okay, she's gonna have, she's gonna have a piss. Uh, <laughs> please join us upstairs, the bar will be open in a minute.